This is a Chavilia Super Rose. Once upon a time, many, many, many moons ago, this plant was being sold for $150. Can you believe that? This beautiful, but it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't really look like that because what they did is they actually created scars on the edges of this plant to make it look more appealing. Now, this is its true form. This is what the plant actually looks like without any frills and shebangs and whatever. So, I believe that this plant is a hybrid from Echeveria Green Smile. So, let's just go have a look at this. There you go. So, the two of them side by side, I believe that this would have been the original plant where this super rose came from because it has the same temperament, hardness. <laughs> Hang on, I'll just move this here. So it has the same feel, really hard, and that one's really hard, except this one has got a smaller form. So I would believe that this super rose here would have been hybridized or however they uh, done it. I don't exactly know how they done this particular one, but it seems like this is just a bigger version of that plant there. Now this plant here is Love by Millibug. We've just had rain and I was going around the garden just to see if there's any damage, rotting or any issues. And this one had a few rotted leaves already dried up from many, many moons ago. And see this one here, I already removed a couple of them from the top. Hang on, look, this is my little bin here. And look at that. Oops, hang on. And <laughs> I was just doing my cleaning. And so that's over here like so. I remove that and what do I see? Look at that. It's already escaping because I went inside and took my camera. And look at this. Look, where are you going? Mealy bag. Oh, it dropped. That's a nice fat one. Oops, come here. Look, we're just going to take a look at you. And then we're going to kill you. So look at that one. Oops. Okay, there. Mealy, mealy blood. And another. Uh, look, I'm just going to focus there. Look at that terrible mealy, mealy bug. More, more, more. It's like a whole family. I'm sorry. Oh, there's more. There's more. I just make sure there's nothing on that one. So I think this is probably the nursery where the little babies are. But anyway, now that they've been discovered... They're all gonna die. I'm sorry, Millibug. I know you have to keep the species, keeping the species alive. <laughs> but I'm trying to keep my species of succulents alive as well. So this is, hang on, I'm just gonna do oh, more. See, I have to clean this, this up first. So that way I can expose all the Millies, the Milly family. Milly, 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 bugging on. There you go. Now, hang on, that's good enough because I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to try and do it quick. That's the reason why. Okay. Okay. Now, is that going to die or... Okay, I just want to remove one leaf. Uh, okay, do you have... Yep, yeah, that's already bad. So, well, I don't know. I'll leave it there. See if it grows a plant. Now, this one is my second. Did I mention that already? My second green smile. I actually bought this one as like a little stemmy thing and it uh, had, I forgot what, sugar, something sugar, jelly, <laughs> Lulu, I planted Lulu with it I think, and the Lulu died, uh, there you go, I got a label, sugar jelly and green smile, there you go, so I paid, yeah, $25 for the two of them, and 10 and 15 but this one is because it's sort of a bigger plant with many heads but you can see that it's been grown outside and it has already survived the frost so which means it's frost hardy but it's not mealy bug hardy so what do we do now we spray now this one here there's new uh, growth in there maybe a flower maybe babies I don't know but just to make sure we're gonna spray them all there and I like to oops keep this just really oh hang on oh sorry aunt I'm sorry 
okay, there's a dry leaf here as well. So really, any nook and crannies, you really have to spray it or hang it. Or else, if you miss something, then the mealybug ca can come back. And look, I saw a big one. Oops. Look. Yes. See the tip? <clears throat> there you go. We'll squash it. Yep, that's mealybug. So that's what I'm saying. If you spray your plant with the metho, sometimes one spray is not enough. So you let this dry up, put it somewhere away from the sun. And I am in my 50% UV shade cloth area here. So it's only being hot. Look, the sun, where you're coming from, so it's coming from this side, which is the shaded part. So it's only getting 50% sun UV brace. So I can leave it here to dry up, just dry up the not the mealy bug, <laughs> the metal, so that way it doesn't burn the plant. Anyway, and once it dries up, then we inspect it and put it back. But, oh look, there's a bigger one mealy bug there as well. Is that a grandfather? Okay, maybe, yep, so sometimes when the leaves are all tightly packed like this as well, it'll, see, I can already see there's a mealy bug in there. Uh, it's good to pull them apart a little bit. See, look, that's a mealy bug. See, that's why. And the first spray normally removes the covering, that white fluffy bit. And if they have really thick, like cocoon-like, fluffy bit, cotton-like, then you have to do two sprays. See, again, I can see another mealy bug there. So, but that's ready. Look, see? They get into nook and crannies. And look, that one there, The this is what I'm saying. So can you see? There's a big mealy bug in there, but there's a white stuff. Can you see that? I don't know if the camera can capture that. There's actually two. So one on the left and one in the center. And there's a little fluffy bit. And I can already see another one, I think, down there. But anyway, I'll take this out. Oh, see? Mealy bug. Oh, I love hunting for mealy bug. And that one is probably an auntie. Oh, look, I squashed the auntie already. Now, there you go. So, and there's one. Oh, the cousin's hiding at the back. Oh, that's an ant. Oh, that's a different species. <laughs> that's not of the mealybug family. So, as you can see that, <laughs> I'm having fun for one. Another. There you go. Die. Okay. So, but since I am confident... <laughs> I've become an expert with spraying and stuff because I have sprayed so much uh, with another mealybug. Uh, what do you call that? So I could just leave them, but it's more fun hunting them. Anyway, I think it's just uh, in natural. Look, see, there's even move the camera away, so. Uh. I can see them now sort of falling off, but anyway. So this one now, I leave that for a few minutes. Oh look, so many babies growing as well. So that's the important part of checking your plants. I just had a close inspection and over here, look. See those two there, babies coming out. And since this plant, and look, more pimples uh, showing. And look, babies there as well. Just like babies everywhere and then any, oh I can't, they're actually hard to remove the, uh, whatchamacallit, <laughs> the leaves, <laughs> the plant, this plant, some plants you can just sort of uh, breathe on them like the burro's tail and the leaves falls off but some of them is really really hard to remove especially the agavoidis type. So actually like say Romeo, Romeo here is also hard to remove even the See the dry leaves? I let it dry up a little bit more, but because we just had rain, we probably had about 40 millimeters of rain overnight, and so everything is wet. So I don't really like touching my succulents when they're wet, but if they do have some rotting that's happening, that's going on, then immediate action is needed. So just so to stop the progression of, oh, hang on, I'm just looking here. I just can't believe that. See, that's a mestro. So some plants would show variegation like that one. Variegation, very distinct. The lines of the color, you know, like even that one there. It's sort of variegation. You can see the different coloring. You've got yellow, red, and green. Especially, say, that one. Look at that variegation baby there. And, of course, 
this amestro here shows you a different type of variegation. There's no lines or anything like that, but instead the whole plant variegates like different color from the original coloring. So basically it just goes, does its own thing. It's like, you know, having a family member that sometimes uh, you feel like you don't really belong to that family. It's something like that. <laughs> so this is what happened to this. It's like, I am not one of you. I am going to do my own thing. And because I'm doing my own thing, look how slow I'm growing. So this is much slower growing compared to these other two. And even these two now, I suspect that, uh, well, they have been growing so slow for a long time now. So I've had this for at least three years. But anyway, the, the counterpart is, look... I got more amestro over there. Okay, I don't know if you can see that leg, like that, that red thing in the center. That's also amestro. But look at that. See? See the difference of the size? Even just those ones. And this one's on the right is just so much prettier. It's just more compact. But anyway, we put this back because this is heavy. My arms is killing me. So this one now, instead of putting it back where it was because it was out in the open next to that funny head mouse, the green mouse there. It was growing behind there. I'm not going to put it back there. I'm going to put this one over here in my 50% QV shade cloth area if I can find a spot up the top here. Okay. Let's do some rearranging. Now this one, what is your name? I don't know what your name is but you've got aphids, okay? You have uh, aphids issues, so, oh, look at the lavender pebbles. So I'll just put this up the top there where you can grow much better. So I do love the plant. Well, put it this way. Oh, I love every plant, every succulent I love. Oh, but I'm just looking. This one needs to be cleaned up. Oh, that's already starting to grow again. Echeveria Shaviana curls. And I have to redo my baby necklace because this one now this crassula look they really need okay this is not gonna happen unless i take it out because i've been meaning to do that but unless i move it out of there or if i just leave that there that's not gonna get done come here come here come come a little baby one a baby one okay put you here now i need to harvest all of that and we do that and that way I can regrow them and this one with the flower stalk I think this is Queen Shen or something it's got a queen name anyway I have to see look look at all the aphids there you have to remove it and the ants are having a party but I'll spray that later on and also this one here oops don't fall yeah it is Queen Shen look yes hang on ah, I dropped it <laughs> Ah, okay, good. <laughs> Didn't hit anything. Oh my goodness. Anyway, there. I have to spray that with water. Oh, we just had rain. So another trick I like to do. Okay, I'll show you. So if you do have issues like I do with aphids like that, so the minute you cut off the flower stalk and you're still left with aphids there, Instead of using, you can use an aphid spray and let them dry up properly. I mean, well, properly, but it's not good because I try and avoid using chemicals as much as possible because now I've actually noticed I hardly have any bees anymore. My whole, my plum tree, not a single, not a single, single, single fruit on it. It was full of flowers and blossoms and everything before. And then now, not a single fruit. Anyway, this one now, get a bottle sprayer with a stream. So I don't know if you can see that. See the water? Stream, not spray, okay? And just blast them. See? Mm. So, normally, oops. I tip it out like that on the side so that way they can drop and of course by the time they crawl to another plant and the ants as well so I'll just do this roughly there you go be better and then that way also you're diluting the nectar that the aphids are bringing in and then now I've got okay wash my hands because I've got uh, There you go. Now, okay, no more aphids. Oh, there's one crawling there. You can't go in there. Okay, all done. 
Someone has made a very ardent request about Sedum Joy's talak variegated. So this is my variegated one. Oh, variegated one. She's going to start singing. But anyway, my eyes is going over there. I see something. But anyway, this is a cutting that I've taken last night. I spent an hour <laughs> looking for my Sedum Joy's talak. So I got a couple of pots, okay? So hang on. This one now. Look, this got hit by the frost because first, so you can see, hang on, that was my Joyce Talak pot that I actually propagated, but it got hit by the frost, so it was looking worse for wear. But look at all the babies growing in the bottom. So I just managed to chop this off last night. And also, I spent about an hour looking for it. I couldn't find it. But then when you don't look for it, it just hits you in the face. So that's what happened to it. And it was really scraggly. And so I decided to chop it off and put this in this pot here now. Look how beautiful that is. And hopefully, well, it will grow because we have now warm weather. But my other Joyce Tullock variegated. Okay, I can put that there. So after chopping it off last night, this is sort of out in the open, but there's like this grill or mesh from the wire. It's sort of helping it a little bit to not expose it too much to the sun so it doesn't burn. So that's also my Letitia cutting that got hit by the frost and also sedums that, or oh, this one I done the other day as well, and straight away put it out in the sun because they love the sun. But this is my other Joyce Tullock. So I got one stem, two stem, all that little stems in here that was affected by the frost. This other big one here, that's a golden nugget, a chivaria, which you can see. It's over here and then I cut them and propagated them. It's somewhere behind me, but anyway, I can't remember where it is now. But anyway, so this is Joyce Tullock growing and that's, I think this is probably, are you, I can't even remember. So this is all I've got left. Oh, there's another. Yep, so there's another one here. So this is very skinny. Oh, that's Joyce Tullock. Joyce Tullock. So it's best to chop them off because if you don't chop them off, they are not going to grow or the babies on the stem. So those are all Joyce Tullock that got hit by the frost because I thought it was nice and thick before and beautiful. And then now, oh uh, my goodness, look, it's all... Uh, destroyed and damaged by the frost because it's as clear clear and then we had minus six all of a sudden in spring oh look now there's a baby Joyce Tullock springing out there and out of this lot here the only ones I was able to save was that one there <laughs> which is pitiful those other three were something else I don't even know what their name but I just found them in one of the whatever but anyway guys oh yes there it is my golden glow I was looking for you and then now you're just in front of me what did I tell you anyway that's all I got for this video and then this Atlantis is looking so beautiful gorgeous look at that uh, anyway bye bye for now too many beautiful plants to look at and you need to be cleaned up you are the crassula that needs to be propagated but look how gorgeous and beautiful you are <laughs>